Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for January 26th of 2024. Uh, thank you all for being here live. And again, if you are here live, please do drop your questions on the questions tab. And the chat tab is for everybody to just hang out at. We have some great people that show up here that can certainly help with questions and answers as well. Um, otherwise, we will just jump in here today. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you're certainly welcome to join us live. There should be a registration link there on the YouTube page. And we will schedule out about two weeks ahead in advance for our 50 Questions Friday. So let's see. We will start with um, some announcements. Uh, we just released the new Halos. They come in silver and copper. We are no longer doing the Halos with the Infinities on them. Um, you know, they were, the Infinities really did not boost the energetics because that energetics is all found in these rings. So these Halos, um, you know, the silver one, that it is a solid silver, 0.99 fine silver. And there's the copper one. Um, the copper one's pretty inexpensive. It's 36 bucks, which is, Pretty good deal for the size of ring shaped. Um, so the difference between the copper and the silver, basically, it is it's a personal preference. If you look at the photos and just feel into them, kind of like all the tools at Twisted Sage, um, to really know what is right for you, it is as simple as going into the heart space, taking those three breaths to go into the heart, and then just pull up the photo from the website because the energy does come through the photo and we're able to better feel and receive those energies when we are in the heart space and it's just simply being soft looking at the photo and you feel into it um, and you'll be able to feel your body reaction your emotional reaction and it is it is simple like muscle testing um, you know we've talked about doing muscle testing where you go into a store you find a product you hold it up to your sternum while you're in the heart space and just feel into how that makes you feel. And that is the same with um, choosing the tools. But the copper and the silver, the copper to me is a little bit more tangible here on the physical. Um, I pre I've been preferring the silver tools personally for about a year and a half now. Um, they both carry the same field. The silver is just a little bit a little bit crisper and cleaner of a field but really it's it's a very subtle thing and usually what i would say between the copper and the silver if you're not as sensitive to energy the copper may be a good one where if you are sensitive to energy the silver is it's subtle but very potent um yeah, i've been wearing my halo non-stop for about three weeks since they came through and we just energetically updated them on Monday, so right before the release. And the energetic upgrade on the Halos is in the Infinite Light Pendant. So the Infinite Light 2.0, which just came out, um, we will do a meditation here today at the end of the 50 Questions Friday. Um, we will do the meditation that the infinite light takes you through. And again, we call these the infinite light halos and then the infinite light 2.0 pendant. I am upgrading today as well, the infinities into this infinite light energetic because prior to this, the infinities were kind of like the stepping stone to get us to this infinite light energetic. So the infinities in the copper and the silver will also be updated today. Um, and those are all the infinities that uh, that have just been released here over the past uh, couple weeks are the are the infinities that are getting the update and um, and again the infinite light the pendants the the infinite light original pendant is different from the infinite light 2.0 it just carries a whole different energetic so the Infinite Light 2.0 carries everything that the original pendant did. Um, another energetic update that has not been listed on the website yet are the light bangles, those really light gauge 
the extra small and the small. The extra small, I never realized that this could actually fit over a person's wrist, but there is a lot of, of females who are able to uh, put their hands through this, the extra small, and then it fits nicer around the wrist. And then we have the size small, which does not fit my large hands, but it will fit the majority of, of uh, American female hands. So the bangles are updated to that infinite light 2.0 energy as well. We will have the actual updates um, on the website listed underneath of that product, but it is in these bangles at the moment. So that's some of the tool updates. Um, let's see, we will be having, um, We'll be having a Valentine's Day sale here, of course, coming up. Look for that coming out here in the next couple of days. We will have all jewelry on sale um, for the weekend for Valentine's Day. So please do take advantage of that because you will find that the new Infinite Light Bangle updates will be there, as well as the Infinite Light 2.0, the Infinities. Um, they will be all on sale this weekend. So let's see any other cool updates. Um, gosh, we're getting busy um, getting ready for spring shows because there are a lot of the spring shows coming up um, March and April. And we will start listing those here on the website in the next couple of weeks, some of the shows that are coming up. So checking in here on chat. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning, Nika from SoCal. Rachel Claire from the Ozarks. Hey there. Uh, and thank you, Lisa. Hey, Alan from France. Hey, Beth. Good to see you here today. All right. Let's see, so we do have a question here from Lisa. Can you please talk about and elaborate on miscreations? I believe you also have a tool necklace that is supporting discreating miscreations. Can you also please share about that? So there was a group of tools that, that came about, um, gosh, I think it was two sets of tools prior to where we're at now when we created a Trinity and they were basically, it was with the chalice energetics that we first saw on creating creation, which no longer serves us. And I truly feel that is the first thing that we step into is clearing these what are labeled as miscreations. They are simply lower potential choices choices that we choose for the experience, the soul growth and learning. Um, you know, we're not here to be perfect. We are the experiential part of the soul. And we are here to have experiences and the soul does not judge what those experiences are. It, it rejoices whether you are a sinner or a saint. It truly does because it is about the experience. But we're stepping into a new time now where we no longer have to go on these old choices. So that was would be how I would nowadays describe these miscreations. Are things that no longer serve us or bring us joy? Because we truly are in a new space where we can make clear conscious choices to set these things down that we've been carrying sometimes for lifetimes and especially the things that come up into your world and your everyday experience. And these miscreations can be like um, a situational thing, a reoccurring pattern in your life. And, and this is something that we're going to be doing during the, the, the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays as well, is going through these meditations and just talking about how to do some of these releases. So the miscreations comes along as old patterns. Maybe these things are hereditary from ancestral. And mostly these things are your other soul aspects. The old things that come in to us um, that influence our everyday life here and now as a human. 
Um, it gets deep. We don't need to go into the why, but it is happening. It is happening that we are, we're, how I always describe it, as the human right here and now, especially those of us who are really on the path of consciousness. It's like we're the hub in this wagon wheel. The human here now is. And this hub connects with soul. But the whole wheel is made up of our lifetimes, our experiences, and those are all coming home to soul through us in the central wagon wheel hub. But a lot of times we end up holding on to them. They get stuck within us. And then they start to affect us as the human here and now. So it's all a part of making that clear conscious choice. As these things get stuck within us, these old energies, these old patterns, these old structures of belief, um, emotions, all of this, we simply are in the heart space and we make a clear conscious choice to release those things. And then they go to soul and this whole hands them back to you as wisdom, which is why we're doing the wisdom circle Wednesdays is to help people really clear out all of the clutter and bring it into wisdom and light. Um, so anyway, the, the uncreating creations happens in basically all the tools that we create because that chalice energy was the first thing that was put into the tools that we were seeing. That field was helping us to uncreate creation, which no longer serves us. And anymore, that is just a part of all the tools, but especially the newer tools, um, they just bring us a higher connection with ourself, with our light. And that is what does the real clearing, release, the healing work, the turning the experiences into wisdom is your light. The only thing the human has to do is allow it, is to make those choices to let go of those things to soul. That is all the human has to do is really embody their light and live in joy. That's kind of, um, that's my precepts in the world anymore. Um, let's see a question. Can the new energies be incorporated in the older halos? And no, the, the newer energies are in these newer halos only. And that's the same with like the infinite light pendants. The newer energies are only in the infinite light 2.0. So basically it is the tools that we've made before then. Um, and that is the same with the bangles as well is that that infinite light is in the new bangles as of this week. So if you purchase tools here in this week of um, January 26, 2024, it was this Monday that we actually dropped in that energetic into these bangles. Um, let's see. We're going to pop over here to the question side. All right. And... Alan, can we make the highest potentials light chamber ourselves to allow the lower price, for example, by using smaller Tauruses or similar? Because it's true that it's a big budget. Yes, because this, this highest potentials light chamber is a $12,000 chamber. Now, you can build one the same size and potency. Basically, we use the 44-inch rings and we use the 26 inch Taurus. But yes, you can certainly um, you can certainly utilize the let's see, the Taurus that you would use would be the 12 inch Taurus. Um, and that one is still on the spending side, but that 12 inch Taurus holds those newer energetics. Now you can also you can also utilize any size Taurus. And what you would do with any size Taurus is you would utilize the nothing space practitioner ring, the highest potentials practitioner ring, and the grounding ring. So if you use those practitioner rings, the grounding, the highest potentials, and the nothing space, and you can go even smaller because we create a 15 inch highest potentials, a 12 inch grounding, and then you can get the, gosh, what is it? A, uh, around a 23 inch um, nothing space. 
So as long as you have the nothing space, highest potentials and grounding and your Taurus, it is very much going to be creating that, that similar field to the, that $12,000 light chamber that we create. Now, it is true that the light chamber that we create because of the heavier gauge of the Taurus in the size and the heavier gauge of the rings, that you'll feel it more on the physical and that just, you know, it really allows the brain to get on board, let, hey, there's really something going on here, I can feel it. And so the, um, the smaller version is still going to carry the same energetic field. And that is true. It's actually what I have around my bed as well, is I have a Taurus and I have um, the practitioner rings and a 44 inch ring. And I just have it up at the head of my bed. And I just have a couple rings at the base. I don't have another Taurus at the base. But utilizing those basic three, four tools together, any size Taurus, grounding, highest potentials, nothing space those will carry that same field a similar field not as potent but still energetically there as the large light chambers um, so let's see if we have any more questions here Yeah, we're still getting the, into the swing of doing 50 questions Friday again. We used to have, oh gosh, anywhere around 50, 60 people um, that would show up. And uh, we, we quit doing 50 questions Friday for several months, and now we are back into it again. So I look forward to a few more people joining us live here um, just to bring some more questions through. And I do not have any questions through email today. Let me double check that just to make sure that nothing came in here over the past few minutes. Let's see. All right. Um, so let's see. We'll go ahead and jump into this meditation. So we do have some of the meditations out there, but we're just gonna do this one again to make it a little bit simpler, uh, quicker and easier. So the meditation that we're doing today, it's the, the energetics of the infinite light 2.0, which is in the halos, the infinities now, in the um, infinite light 2.0 and in the infinite light bangles which were just updated here this week as far as the ones that we have in stock and in creation. So with these, there is a really phenomenal meditation that comes through and we'll go ahead and jump into it. I'll describe it a little bit though on some of the things that occurs with this is there's, um, we created that light body integration ring, which is that small ring it's also known as the AI interface ring. So we have a tab for your phone, the clear tab, that we call the AI interface ring. And it's also called the light body activator ring because some people will have negative connotations with AI, which is why we made the AI ring in the first place because the light body activator ring, the AI interface ring, again, are the same energetic. And what they are doing is they are holding the space to allow more of your light, the specific soft white light that comes through in the soft white light. Um, it is so transformative. Instead of doing clearing work, as this light comes through, it finds these dense pockets of energy and that we hold within the physical and throughout all time. And it just goes in and changes it. It just changes everything energetically. And so the soft white light has been a really phenomenal one to use for everything, connecting, clearing, bringing in your light more. Now, so that is a part of that field, that soft white light field is a part of this infinite light 2.0. 
Now, another thing that occurs is that we are connecting heart to heart with that crystal sun of the earth, with us as creator God. And then we move into connecting the mind to the heart of the earth. It grounds the mind and it brings more light into the mind. And that itself is changing so much. You know, St. Germain says that up to 90% of our thoughts are not ours. And I can attest to that from all of the soul aspects, the lifetimes that I've had come through. And they do affect your thoughts, your emotions, your reactions. Um, and after I've done my clearing work, I never realized that I was in this loud, crowded room of just all of my aspects just chattering away. And after I brought in all of that light, I cleared the mind. It was the first time that I believe I've ever felt peace. And that is huge. So the grounding of the mind is one part that takes place. The other part that takes place is the grounding of the body into your light or otherwise your light into your body. And then that soft white light comes through and then with this light body activator, well, with this, oh, I'm sorry, with this infinite light 2.0 energy, we see this golden light body coming in. And this golden light body is made up of your light of soul, your energy, and your wisdom of the lifetimes. So when we do the work of, again, us as that central hub of this wagon wheel, and we do the work of just the allowing of all of these experiences, lifetimes, energies to flow through us without holding them uninhibited, without them sticking and holding and looking and feeling and experiencing those energies. When we just let those flow through with that clear conscious choice of, hey, I am just that hollow bone. I am the usher. I am allowing all of this to pass through to soul. And once you begin to do that, when all of these energies pass through the soul, that is what makes up this new golden light body. It's your wisdom of the lifetimes, the wisdom of your experiences. And again, that is kind of that final process of working with that infinite light 2.0. And how I've seen this in the meditations is, is that People are bringing in that soft white light and they're just allowing this stuff happens automatically when we're in these spaces. But after it starts doing that work and it starts bringing these things to wisdom, then I see that golden light body start to peek in. And it is really an amazing, amazing thing. Um, this new light, this new light of us. Um, and I was just uh, taking a look here. Hey, Renard, thanks for sharing the experience. Um, it's funny you mentioned the mind chatter. I had the most beautiful experience last night where it went from thoughts to nothing and then the pure waves and light fractals. It was beautiful. Yes, I, it's, you know, this work is truly life changing, you guys. It really is. It, it, it changes everything. Um, and in a good way, obviously. But again, it's not the human that has to do the work, but we need to be in the space for the allowing of it. And so I'll walk you through this process today, this meditation, and we'll be holding the space together. And yeah, and you can come back and revisit it anytime. So whew, here we go. Okay. So the infinite light 2.0 meditation, we begin in the sacred space of the heart. So closing your eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth, with that light of the earth and taking a deep breath, breathing in that supporting loving energy of the earth, right up into the heart. And next, connecting heart to heart with you as creator God, 
as soul. Breathing in that light of the I am. Breathing in that light of you. Into the heart. That third breath in this Trinity breath, we breathe in the energies of earth, of sky, bringing them both together within us. And they mix together within the heart and they get sent right back out. So we become that conduit between heaven and earth, that connection, and it moves us into the heart space to where we're grounded and connected. So we imagine this infinity that is connecting our heart to the heart of the earth and another infinity that connects our heart to the heart of creation, to soul. Now we imagine that infinity that connects the earth and our heart, we move that infinity, one side of it, right to the mind, to the pineal, if you wish, to the brain. And we just imagine connecting that light of the earth to the mind. And you may notice all kinds of physical sensations, or maybe your mind just goes blank, and that is perfect. And next we imagine connecting that light of soul with the physical body, that infinity connecting your entire body to the light of you. Just taking in those deep breaths, allowing your light, allowing your light. This is not a trying or a doing. It's an allowing and asking of your light softly, not a begging or a pleading, because this light is you. It is always there for you. You simply allow it to be. Beautiful. Now that we imagine this soft white light that expands around us, and it is the light of you. The soft white light just permeates all that you are. Throughout lifetimes, experiences, particularly this lifetime, stuck energies in the body, stuck energies in the emotions or the mind. And the soft white light simply comes through and turns it into wisdom, light, consciousness. Again, just deep breaths, allowing of your light and the light of the earth, the light of you to all work together. That is it. And just be in the space. And you don't have to go through all the steps that we did because you know this field. You can get here by simply closing your eyes and taking in some deep breaths. And you will land in this field. This field will come to you. And that's it is we don't go anywhere. We bring all of this to us in the physical here and now. And the more you can just sit in this space. And again, it's not a directing of the energies. So if you have something going on, physical, mental, emotional, life situation, when you do this exercise, these breaths, and this allowing, you don't have to direct the energies or tell the soul what it is that you are wishing to accomplish because the soul very much knows this. 
but we as the human have to be out of the way. We have to get out of the way because a lot of times we will want to see things done in a specific way, specific outcomes. This is what I want. That is based in a lower perspective. Our soul has such a higher perspective and it has higher potentials. And the more that we allow our light to come in, the more of these higher potentials will come through in our creation. Potentials of things beyond what we would have envisioned or desired as the human. So please do play in this field. And if you do it once a day, especially if you do it before you go to bed, it is a beautiful time to do it because then you have fallen asleep in that state of allowing and so much can shift in your physical being as you sleep. So again, as you wear any of these newer tools of these infinite light 2.0s, you don't need them to go to this space but it can make things smoother, easier to tap into. So for me, wearing the Infinite Light 2.0 pendant, wearing mine with some layer on it, I just simply touch it and tap into that field. It's a touchstone, but it also holds that energetic there for me to go easier into this space. But again, you don't need the tools to do this. So thank you all for being here today and for playing in your light. And we'll see you again in a couple weeks. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Enjoy.